Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro DC. Also, Mark Levine, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the Democratic nominee for the 45th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. The Obama administration is escalating its campaign to fight ISIS by sending U.S. special forces into Syria for the first time. Mark, is this a sign that President Obama's initial plan to take out the terrorists isn't working? I tell you, I have not been impressed with President Obama's foreign policy. I'm a Democrat. I love his domestic policy. Every single time he and Hillary Clinton disagreed on foreign policy, she was right. He was wrong. ISIS is the result of Assad and Russia and Iran and the terrorist acts. It's not the cause of them. For all the evil they are, what Assad is is a much greater evil. And Russia is already making a major play in Syria, propping up the current government. The Pentagon says fewer than 50 U.S. troops will be in country. Jack, what do you make? of this plan? Is it too little, too late? I think Obama, Mark and I have rare agreement here, Morris. I think Obama in the Mideast is wrong on strategy and, and e even more wrong and worse on tactics. On strategy, uh, the, whole thing, the whole thing has been messed up right from the start. On tactics, the problem is that he's afraid to bomb civilians. The issue is that there's a lot of collateral damage. Obama fears collateral damage with ISIS. ISIS is embedded heavily in civilian populations. What you have to do, you've got to attack those civilian populations. It's a shame to say that, but that's the only way to get rid of ISIS. Obama's been reluctant to do that. That's why this goes on and on and on. Now yeah. you're seeing more American troops. It's becoming almost hu humorous with the left. He's losing people like Mark. You see how bad it's getting. I tell you, he needs to stop the bombing of civilians. Right now, today, Assad murdered 40 of his own citizens and wounded 100. He sent a missile into a market in yeah, Damascus, but ISIS is the embedded, capital city. Mark. The ISIS reason is why ISIS enemy. exists is because the people are fighting Assad. ISIS has killed several hundred people. Assad has killed several hundred thousand people. He's the reason why ISIS exists. Yeah, but see, you, you, you make the same strategic mistake as Obama. You don't understand that when you're fighting ISIS, you're necessarily in full alliance with Assad. You can't you, have it any other way. Well, no, but that's there my point. These, we shouldn't be in alliance with Assad. Well, then if you want not, to help the Kurds, Then you that's can't fight fine. ISIS. Then not you're not fighting ISIS. the migrant crisis in Europe, which is a whole other show. All right, let's move on. The Republican National Committee has suspended its relationship with NBC. <laughs> the move comes after after intense criticism from RNC Chairman Reince Priebus over Wednesday night's presidential debate on CNBC. I was very disappointed in the moderators. I'm disappointed in CNBC. You know, I thought maybe they would bring forward a pretty fair forum here tonight, but I think it was one gotcha question, one personal low blow after the other. It's almost like they tried to design a Rubik's Cube for every question. Even the candidates expressed their displeasure with the moderators. You know, let me say something at the outset. The questions that have been asked so far in this debate illustrate why the American people don't trust the media. Jack, how did you feel about the questions during the debate? NBC said anyone wanting to be president should be able to handle tough questions. Well, I agree with that, but I also agree with Priebus that this, this was the most biased debate I have ever seen. Harwood, John Harwood was so over the line. Chris Christie hit it out of the park. He said to Harwood, John, do you want to answer the questions or do you want me to answer the questions? It's like before a jury, a lawyer says asked and answered. These people were talking to themselves. Uh, Becky Quick coming with this very biased question. She says, our cause when she's talking about women. Why is it her cause? Just because she's female. I thought that was silly. It was the most biased nonsense I've ever seen. The worst. Poor Republicans. They were asked tough questions. Oh, my God. You know, the president has never asked tough questions. You know, Anderson Cooper in the Democratic debate asked tough question after tough question. Not like this. Hillary Clinton just batted them off. In fact, she sat through 11 hours of absolutely impossible asinine questions at the Benghazi hearings and just kind of brushed them off. Yeah, but Had Mark, no you problem missed, with you it. missed the point. You know, that's, I got to tell you, if you've ever been to a, a presidential news format. conference, that's Jack, yeah, you, you know understand. that the president is asked tough questions. Sometimes the president is asked unfair questions, and he does doesn't go around and whine about yeah, it. But Mark, he you don't understand. The when you, when you look she. at Benghazi, the Benghazi hearing that you analogize to, that's a political forum. That's Congress. You expect politics from both sides. Anderson Democrats Cooper asked tough questions of, of all the Democratic candidates in the Democratic so National debate. So you don't think debate, John Harwood? You, you don't think John Harwood was over the line Wednesday night? Come on. You no, don't I think don't. John Harwood I think was if you're 
ask the tough question, you answer oh, it. You can no, say uh, that. That's, let me tell you why the question's unfair. But the way they whined and complained and oh no, I can't handle a tough question. Well, at least tells I think me they're they not ready to be well. president. The politicians came back with some pretty good retorts. Now, despite the criticism, the debate was the highest rated program for CNBC and all eyes were on Jeb Bush. Many said this was a do or die moment for him. Now, analysts say he walked away the biggest loser. All right, Mark, what did you make of Bush's performance as a Democrat? Does he still have a chance? I agree he's the biggest loser. You know, I predicted six months ago he would be the Republican nominee. I got to tell you, I'm going to make news here. I retract that. I do not Ooh. think he will be the Republican nominee any longer. Still don't think it'll be Donald Trump. Right now, my money's on Marco Rubio. But Jeb Bush has had a disastrous performance, not just in the debate, but a week earlier when he was complaining that if you're going to be tough to me, then maybe I won't be president. Maybe I have better things to do. Um, the American people don't want whining. They yeah, want to hear someone be presidential. Is Bush, Jeb Bush is in trouble. You think Bush is going to make it all the way, Jack? No, I, I, I largely agree with Mark. We have a lot of agreement today. I just think Trump will be the nominee and not Rubio. Uh, Wow. Trump will have a better chance than the general. But I'll tell you, uh, with Jeb Bush, uh, he looks bad. He's a poor speaker. No one's ever trained him to give a speech. He's a poor sport, too. He's, he's a poor sport. I agree I with all of hearing, that. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's petulant. He's, he's just... Petulant you know, like, is the right word. Petulant. petulant. Now, if there was one a point, though, Morris, yeah. there's one, one point, one important point. We were talking about this earlier. He has more than $100 million in super PAC cash. That will keep him in the race for a long time. I don't look for Jeb Bush, bad as he is, to drop out anytime no, soon. No, I agree. He'll last through March, but he's he's in trouble. All the new money, it, the establishment money is going to go to Rubio, not And Bush. they're looking to dig up dirt on Rubio, and they've got the money to do it. Now, the Bush campaign was hoping for a breakout moment when Jeb challenged Senator Marco Rubio, a longtime friend. But Marco, when you signed up for this, this was a six-year term, and you should be showing up to work. I mean, literally, the Senate, what is it, like a French work week? You get like three days where you have to show up? You can campaign or just resign and let someone else take the job. That moment quickly deflated when Rubio responded. I don't remember you ever complaining about John McCain's vote record. The only reason why you're doing it now is because we're running for the same position and someone has convinced you that attacking me is going to help you. Well, I've been Here's the bottom line. I'm not, my campaign is going to be about the future of America. It's not going to be about attacking anyone else on this stage. Now we'll get to Bush's call for Rubio to resign in a minute, but Jack, what did you make of Rubio's response? You've said he's wet behind the ears, but now many saw him as the winner during this debate. Oh, it was a great response. I saw Christie as the winner. Rubio di did well. I think he did extremely well. I continue to think, Morris, that uh, the country sees Rubio as the man of the future, not the man of the present. I think he'd How about make a an, VP? I think he'd make an excellent VP choice. I think they may end up choosing between Rubio and Ben Carson, depending on which way no. you want to go, Hispanic voter, African American. But I think Rubio would be excellent. I think he's at least VP. Although I have to tell you something, it's a fair question to ask whether or not he re should resign. Just because Rubio was right that Bush was saying it for political reasons doesn't mean he, that he shouldn't answer the question. If he's running for president and he can't do his job in the Senate, he needs to resign. Well, but there's well, a long tradition. There's a long tradition, Mark. I mean, that was true of Bob Dole, uh, McCain. Uh, that was true. Of, that was true of Barack Obama. Barack Obama had that problem worse than anybody. Obama did almost nothing in the Senate. Well, that's He's, right. And calls for Rubio to resign from the senator now coming from Minority Leader Harry Reid. Mark, is it fair to ask Rubio to resign? Fact checks show then Senator Obama missed roughly the same percentage of votes when he was running for president. I, I think it is a fair question. Look, we all know why senators do it. They stay in because in case they lose. They want a job that they can they can back up to. That's why they do it. That's why it, Rand Paul is running for both president and re-election as senator at the same time. But it is a fair question. At the very least, when there are votes that would make the difference, they should be flying back to Washington to make those votes. Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton was watching the debate and summed up her reaction in one tweet. But the lighthearted moment took a turn after several on the right noted the video was from a Benghazi hearing. Now, Mark, should Clinton have been more careful? No, the Benghazi hearing was a joke. There have been seven hearings on Benghazi where they actually tried to understand what happened in Benghazi. This was a hearing about Sidney Blumenthal. It had nothing to do with Benghazi. The Republicans were entirely doing it for political reasons, and I think she was right. I think that's how she dealt we with it. We have them. to keep our eye on the ball with respect to uh, Mrs. Clinton, and you have to understand, she still ha has, despite the great performance in the Benghazi hearing, and I fully stipulate to that, I concede that, she still has the problem she can't surface anywhere in in the news media without negative press and without a discussion of scandal. And Those unless, days are over, Jack. Unless That's until so they last change month. that, she's got continuous problems. That's last month. Nobody cares about this anymore. All right. Well, as, as she would say, what 
difference does it make? Like, All right. Exactly. While the 2016 race continues to heat up, another election is over. Paul Ryan is the new Speaker of the House. Sorry, Jack, about your attempt. <laughs> During Ryan's speech, he promised to start fresh. The House is broken. We're not solving problems. We're adding to them. And I am not interested in laying blame. We are not settling scores. We are wiping the slate clean. All right, Jack, do you think Paul Ryan can pull your party and the House together? Oh, I do. I'm very optimistic. My gallant bid came to an end, Morris. It came to an end on Wednesday, as Sorry. you know. Yeah, it was a tough break. But I think <laughs> uh, I, really, I really and truly believe the Republicans would not be able to find a leader. If anyone can do it, Paul Ryan can do it. I think what you'll see is a very short tenure. He will look to leave on a high note. He, do, he really doesn't want to be speaker. He wants to run for president. If he has any kind of a high note, I think he'll get out. He, he'll want to leave on top. Uh, I look for, for him to maybe serve until after the 2016 election, early 2017. That's it. A year, year and a half at most for Ryan. Well, I agree it's a short tenure because the true business of America is done by the Democrats. If you look at the most budget, recent budget bill, almost all the Democrats voted for it, maybe a third of Republicans. What Republicans do when they need to govern is they turn to Democrats. The Democrats then govern. Republicans get upset. They throw away their speaker. The reason why Paul Ryan won't last 16 months yeah. is because that's when the Mark, most recent bill remember, expires. The Democrats will have to Democrats, pass another bill, and then Ryan will be out. You have put to remember, else the American in. people are choosing to make the House Republican time after time after time, and there's a reason no, for that. No, they vote for Democrats. It's just gerrymandered to they give them Republican They don't Republicans trust people like Pelosi and Steny Hoyer to make policy that's for the United true. States. That's All the right. reason. It's Before we go, let's talk about Donald Trump. He's come under fire for saying his father gave him a, quote, small loan of $1 million to get started in Manhattan. Now Stephen Colbert has issued this challenge. Tonight, I'm happy to announce that I've taken the liberty of writing a million-dollar check from Donald Trump to the charity of my choice, the Harlem Children's Zone. It's all filled out, even the memo line, no big deal. <laughs> now, Mr. Trump, all you have to do is come here and sign it, proving that a million dollars really is a small amount of money, especially when it's helping, especially, especially when it's helping other people get a start in Manhattan. It's a good publicity ploy. Could help out Trump. Mark, do you think he'll sign it? No, I don't think he'll sign it, but I think it'd be great if he would. It's a great charity. It's a great cause and good for Stephen Colbert for telling him it's a tiny amount of money to Donald Trump. Why not give it to children? Well, remember, Jack, what do you think? Trump has always overstated his wealth. He's do, doing it now. He's prob probably worth not more than $2 billion. He's always actually been short of cash. Only and $2 And the billion. Donald is quite cheap, Morris. I don't think he'd ever sign a check like that. That's how the rich stay rich, I guess. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist. Mark Levine, Democratic strategist. The best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Morris. Thanks, Morris. Thanks, Morris.